How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, I want to help you understand, is solar the right move for you and your own home? Now, you usually would have a professionally installed system like the one behind me. This was installed in my home about 12 months ago, and it's 11 kilowatts worth of solar. Now, this was no small investment. I paid $37,000 for this system. And if you want to get your own sizing and rough estimate on cost, you'll see a link in the description. And that's where I started off just in a couple minutes to get that dashboard on my home so I could figure out how large of a system do I need and how much would that cost. They can also connect you up with installers if that's something that looks reasonable for you. We will also talk about DIY. You know I love doing the projects yourself so there is an option for that and I had completed a 4.8 kilowatt system on one of my rental properties this year so it is possible and you can save a lot of money taking on the labor yourself. But first let's just go over the basics of the system. Let's pop one of these panels off see what's underneath and how does that actually connect up to our electrical panel. So I'll just prop up this panel. This is a 400 watt REC panel. It's what you call a tier one panel, very high quality and 400 watts gonna be the most common size. Then here is what's called a microinverter. So we're gonna take these cables. These cables take DC voltage. They go in those connectors there, which are called MC4 connectors. And those are a standard within the industry connects up to your in-phase microinverter, and then your in-phase microinverter will convert this here on this trunk going down to the other panels, and then those will daisy chain together, and that is actually 240 volts AC. So let's go look at the conduit that that goes into, and then how do we actually combine multiple branches together. So then you might have one 240 branch or multiple branches like I do. I have three different branches coming through conduit. So you can see the conduit right here running all the way up there to the roof line. That's gonna drop down and then the conduit is gonna run over and then into this box hiding behind the tree that's called a combiner box. So let's show you what's inside that and how we start to bring it together and connect it into our electrical panel. So the end phase combiner box, this is also called the Envoy. So this brings together all of our circuits. I already removed the screw so we can take off this cover plate so you can see inside. So we have our three branches here, 20 amp, 240 volt Eaton breaker. Same here, same here. Those are all three different branches of solar coming in. These hot black wires come through a current clamp here. That's measuring the amperage in, and that's gonna help us monitor our overall solar production. Now the brains here, the circuit board back here, also tracks other current cl clamps that will come from your electrical panel. So that's gonna help you with the production and also consumption. Now this 15 amp breaker is strictly to power the unit that has nothing to do with the solar production overall. And then from that envoy, we'll have the larger gauges coming off the bottom of the bus bars over to a main disconnect. This is how you're gonna easily turn on or off the complete solar system. This is also a safety. You'd want the fire department to be able to have access to completely de-energize your system quickly. And this is gonna be called out as a necessity for your code in your area. Then we have a bi-directional meter. So your utility will have to come out and either swap your meter base or reconfigure your existing smart meter. So you can not only bring power into the house, but you can also put it back out onto the grid and it should be noted if you do not have battery storage in your house the solar production only happens when the grid is on that can be a big misconception if the power goes out you just have solar panels you have no battery backup you are not going to be able to leverage that solar power during a blackout scenario so just keep that in mind that you do need batteries for storage if you want to leverage that solar power during a power outage so let's go ahead and look at the panel and how do we actually land those wires into our panel what we're using is what's called a line side tap but there is another option too we'll review so a lot going on here so i'll try to get make some rhyme or reason out of it when it comes to the solar we have this black and this red here those are what's coming from the envoy that combiner box and through the main disconnect and then those are going into these clamps these clamps actually clamp onto the main lines are two phases coming in and they pierce into the copper so that's how we make connection bringing the solar power into the line side the line side tap now these two black current clamps, those are from the end phase envoy. That's how that tracks the overall in and out. And then these white ones, all these other white wires, that's a separate energy monitoring Emporia system I installed. That has nothing to do with the solar system itself. 
Now, depending on how much solar you're bringing in, you could bring it into a 240 volt breaker, but that is going to have its limitations. Usually you're gonna max out at about a 40 amp breaker in terms of what you can land there but it does depend on the size of your main breaker. And sometimes you can actually adjust the size to make sure the combination of this amperage and your main breaker amperage doesn't go over the overall amperage of your panel. So it is something that you usually need a professional to help you out with to make sure you're meeting code. And for that DIY system I talked about earlier is, is only 4.8 kilowatts. So it's easily able to just come into a breaker here and I did not have to do the line side taps. Now the way I did that DIY system, it was in conjunction with a company called Project Solar and they will help you out with the design of your system, getting the prints, submitting your permits, ordering all the materials, then they drop the materials off, you go to work, complete the labor aspect of it. If you have the skills and you're comfortable doing that type of work, then you can order up the inspections and get your permission to operate. That process was very smooth for me, but again, I know that's not for everybody. Just keep in mind that you might be paying about $3 to $3.50 per watt for a professionally installed system, and that's gonna depend on your home, your area. But for the DIY systems, you might be below $2 per watt. You can literally save $10,000 or more by taking on that labor yourself. So it's something to consider, and you'll see that link below the video for the DIY option that we did on the rental property. But let's keep going on the finances. So $37,000 is what I invested in this system. Let's start breaking that down after tax credits, other incentives, and then what I've saved so far, projecting out how many months is it gonna take me to pay off that amount that I invested. So starting off, there's four main ways you can get panels on your home in terms of how do you pay for them. Cash is what we're talking about here. So it was a $37,000 investment in cash. And I do understand that is a lot of money to invest in your home but that is the scenario that we're going through. Loan products, maybe a home equity line of credit on your home. I'd be a little careful with those products, but don't forget, if you do a loan product, you need to work in the interest. You're gonna have an interest cost per month, and you're gonna to have to count for that in terms of how many months of saving on your power bill can you eliminate your investment, and you have to offset that monthly interest cost. So just keep that in mind. Lease and PPA or power purchase agreement. These are long-term agreements with usually the installer or another company, multi-decade, sometimes 20 or 25 year agreements to be in a lease agreement or a power purchase agreement, agreement that you're gonna basically purchase your power from what is generated on your roof. These are no-go zones. I do not like either one of those. The contracts are way too long and there's not many homeowners I've ever found that say, hey, I'm gonna be in my home for 20 or 25 years and I'm confident, and then things don't change three years down the road. So these will make selling your home complex because the new homeowners will have to transfer that agreement to the terms that you signed on for, and that's just gonna make it more complex because less buyers are gonna be willing to do that. So you might find it very hard to sell your home, or you have to buy out these agreements that are gonna be at inflated cost. So be careful. These would be the only two that I recommend and really cash I would prefer. So now let's focus in on the actual numbers here so we can get how many months will it take to pay back. $37,000 initial investment. There is a 30% tax credit. The only catch here is you have to be paying in taxes to take advantage of that credit. So if you're not paying in taxes right now, well, it's gonna be hard for you to take that credit. So just make sure that you're paying over this amount in taxes and it can be spread out per year, but for me, that was 11,100 and that is a minus. We're taking that off because it was a credit, not a deduction, but a credit. So we get all that money back when we file our taxes after the installation. And then energy credits. In Illinois, where this system is installed, there are things called renewable energy credits. They see how much are you actually producing and then they multiply that out over 15 years and then they say, oh, you're gonna produce this much megawatt hours and they assign a value to it. It's kind of like an open marketplace and that value does go up and down. For a residential home, they will pay it in one lump sum. For commercial, you'll get paid out quarterly. So for here, I actually got a check back for $14,200. So a major factor in terms of offsetting my cost. So after that first 12 months, I already got these two back. So that left me with a total investment of $11,700.
dollars. So this is what we're going to need to offset now with saving on our monthly power bill. So let's look at those results and see how long will it take us to pay that back. So now when it comes to my monthly savings, because of the amount of power that I am producing opposed to what I'm consuming, my minimum savings over the first year was $34 per month, so that's not much. But in the summertime, $140 because of the amount of air conditioning we are running, but that averages out to $76 per month. Now this is in the actual energy that I am saving. One caveat is I have one-to-one -one net metering. That means I can put extra production onto the grid and the utility will track that for me. And then when I need to consume that, I can pull it back off. So they're kind of serving as my battery and it is a one-to-one -one relationship. That is not the way it is on all states. So check your area for your state and also check your utility because it can change throughout the utilities in the same state. So I have, as good as it gets, I have one-to-one net metering so i can put all that extra let's say during the springtime or the fall or even in the winter when i'm not using that much power but i might be producing quite a bit and then in the summertime when i'm doing a lot of air conditioning i can pull that back off so what we need to do for how many months is this going to take is we need to take our eleven thousand seven hundred, and then we're going to divide that by the 76. That would put me right at 154 months of this savings to pay back my investment. Divide that by 12, and then that's gonna equal right at about 13 years. That's a long time. That's actually not good. That's way too long. You could have invested that money elsewhere, got a reasonable return, opposed to investing in the solar system and then capitalizing on the savings. Now, a few things I'm not taking into account that the solar installers will be taking into account is uh, price increases. This is especially true for me. Right now, I am only paying very low, some of the lowest in the nation eight cents per kilowatt hour. Something tells me you are quite a bit higher. Let me know down in the comments what you pay. And some places have a variable rate depending on time of use, and it can be as bad as 20, 30, or even 40 cents per kilowatt hour. So that would completely change your calculations because your monthly savings would be much, much higher. Also, some people will argue that your home price, your value of your home, might increase a little bit. Maybe some people see that solar that you installed on your home as an asset. I haven't seen that come to fruition quite yet. Maybe in the future that will be true, but right now I'm not seeing that as something that's really gonna command a premium compared to your neighbor that's in the same neighborhood, maybe a similar home, but without solar. And then finally, just talking about DIY again. So if you can get all those benefits that we got, but you can do it yourself and save on labor, that is where you might be able to really lower this down. I would like to see that more like a six to seven year payback period. Now, if we take some price increases, will I be paying 16 cents double per kilowatt hour in the next few years? That is a true possibility. So you're just doubling these. So all of a sudden now I'm at $152 a month and obviously that's gonna start paying back much, much faster. So in reality, my payback's probably gonna be about nine to 11 years, depending on some of those factors. But overall, I'd wanna be confident about a six to seven year payback period. Now, if you wanna explore DIY more, I did document that complete process on the 4.8 kilowatt system that I installed on the rental property. And you can check out this video right here over on our Everyday Solar channel that is all about solar and smaller DIY systems, but also grid-tied roof-mounted systems like this one. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.